Welcome to Northwest Profiles, a look at people, places, and events of interest in the Inland Northwest. The railway car, a practical piece of machinery designed for the transportation of people and goods. Although these types of transport are still widely used, the luxury of these older pieces of craftsmanship would surely be difficult to duplicate. In Cranbrook, British Columbia, this type of historical workmanship has not gone unnoticed. Preservation is the key. Formed in 1976 by a group of concerned citizens, the Cranbrook Archives Museum and Landmark Foundation, also known as Kamal, undertook a gigantic project. We saw a lot of the local landmarks, of course, being destroyed uh, in the name of progress. And uh, our belief is that uh, our local landmarks uh, can be preserved and, and still be viable within the changing community and the changing times. The Cranbrook Railway Museum was born under these guidelines. And at a cost of $1,200, the dining car Argyle was sessioned in 1977. We decided that since Cranbrook was primarily uh, built as a railroad community, or exists today as a result of the railroad coming through Cranbrook, that perhaps the Cranbrook Archives Museum and Landmark Foundation should uh, have an office that is a rail car or rail related. And uh, that was our, our primary office. Now, of course, uh, the car was completely modernized, painted green and, and unrecognizable as the, the car that it once was. So what we did is um, they had stripped some of the paint off and uh, recognized the, uh, the wood inlay underneath, uh, researched the inlay and discovered that it was uh, part of the A-class dining cars of the 1929 Trans-Canada Limited. And that, of course, got everybody quite excited. Excitement spurred action and restoration was begun. With plans in place to collect the remainder of the rail cars and through networking of various museums throughout the country and through the goodwill of many benefactors, cars were bought on the museum's behalf and donated. Currently, the museum is in the process of collecting five complete sets of cars. We've got cars off-site that are like the dining car and like most of these cars are in fact unrecognizable as the cars that they once were. In fact, we rescue a lot from scrap yards and salvage yards. You know, we've been around 18 years, 19 years now, and none of the cars are completely restored. You know, we're dealing with uh, artifacts that are no longer in existence. We're dealing with materials that are no longer manufactured. So uh, it does take uh, quite a long time. And, and given that we rely on basically uh, charitable donations, uh, the work progresses rather slowly. With most of the restoration process being done by unskilled labor employed under government job development or retraining programs, and with proposed government cutbacks, restructuring appears to be in the museum's future. You know, speaking perhaps a little in advance here, but uh, yeah, yeah, we rely on government funding um, for most of our restoration work. And now it looks like we'll be turning to more self-sufficient programs perhaps, such as the educational programs. Um, maybe looking towards uh, different ways of increasing our revenue or allocating our revenue towards restoration projects. Uh, we've got overnight educational programs allowing the, the children to experience things they will never most likely experience in their lifetime. Uh, they can come and spend the evening aboard the trains, they can have breakfast on a dining car, you know, and with us being located uh, next to the active CP rail yards, of course you got the sights and sounds as well and it makes it a very authentic experience. Many of these cars were built for luxury, and the museum's goal is to portray that luxury. As you walk through these fancy cars, some you will notice have a distinct character that may be hidden from view. This is the uh, sleeper car Strathcona. It's one of three types of sleepers designed for the Trans-Canada Limited. Uh, this one had a particular 12-in-1 configuration, meaning it had 12 of these standard sleeping sections and one private drawing room. Now, the S-Class sleeper meant that all their names began with S. These were built, of course, back in 1929 for use on the 1929 Trans-Canada Limited. Now, in 1948, these cars were modernized or painted over, as you can see on this side over here, and they were renamed T-Class sleepers, and all their names at that point would have begun with T. So this one in 1929 to 1930 was called the Somerset. After 1948, it was renamed the Travers. And this is a business car, British Columbia. This was the private car for the superintendent of the railway. And actually, the main feature of these cars is the very, very rare fandeliers. 
uh, which was a, an early form of air conditioning. It dispersed the air outwards such that any soot or smoke that might have been in the air would be dispersed out and into the walls. And that's why you see the walls are a lot darker in this car than in the others. Hi, and this is a dining car, Argyle. This, is, uh, this car houses the largest public display of original Canadian Pacific China and silverware in the world. Uh, this car has uh, very particular features, uh, including the brown maple leaf motif china, which was uh, used on this particular service, and the famous Tudor Rose and Crown wood inlay, which was the only wood inlay to have been given a name. And uh, in fact, this wood inlay was specific to the uh, A-class diners. Now, this is the executive night car Strathcona, and this car is representative of our uh, ongoing restoration here at the museum facilities. Uh, recently, the uh, walnut wood paneling in here has all been redone uh, to replace the weathered and or weather-induced aging uh, that you'd see throughout the rest of this car. And this is what's called a folding commode chair. Now, underneath the seat here, you've got your washroom or your toilet facility, and uh, in the back of the chair it just folds down, and of course you've got your sink. Further, you'd have this little drain right here, so as you brought the sink up the water would just go straight down and drain through the drains. We've got a number of artifacts that are designated as Canadian cultural property and that is the highest designation for any artifact uh, within this country. And we're quite proud of that and uh, of course you know with that we're taking uh, extreme steps to assure the preservation of those artifacts. Uh, currently the car Strathcona and uh, which is an executive night car and the uh, car Curzon, which in fact uh, came through Spokane, part of the original Sioux Spokane Train Deluxe from 1907. Uh, we're currently restoring those cars now, uh, taking care of the weather-induced aging, uh, taking stop, uh, steps to uh, preserve both the exterior and the interior. Um, another job we're working on, of course, is uh, the restoration of another Cranbrook landmark, which is the old uh, CP Railway freight shed. While in the process of finalization of plans to build a new $34 million facility slated to be completed in 1998, the museum along with the city of Cranbrook have gone to great lengths to assure that these antique treasures are not lost to the ravages of time. I, I think it's even surpassed the most optimistic uh, expectations of uh, anybody that was ever first involved with the uh, foundation. Most people that have lived in the community um, for years, in fact, come through and, you know, the view from the highway seems to never really change because it's always the cars, you know, we're building behind as opposed to in front. And so people entering the museum are just amazed. Like most of our uh, recent restoration work has been internal. And we're changing every week, let alone every year. If you have a topic for Northwest Profiles, send it to KSPS TV, 3911 South Regal, Spokane, Washington, 99223. Northwest Profiles is a presentation of KSPS Public Television.